Hi, so this one was suggested to me by a good friend of mine, Lisa. She uh, dropped me a line and said, Rob, hey, how about your ink? Will your ink make a thermoelectric generator? Can we get a thermocouple out of it and use that to generate some current? And I thought, hmm, do you know what? I, I don't really know, but that's an awesome idea. Is, you, though you can use exotic materials, things like uh, bismuth telluride, to get really good um, responses from differences in temperature, they are quite toxic and quite difficult to use and actually relatively expensive, which is why tags tend to be relatively expensive. Um, but I had a look around and there was some research where some guys had taken some carbon fibre and they'd coated the fibre in nickel and then they'd etched the nickel off so that they had nickel fibre, nickel fibre, if you like, nickel carbon, nickel carbon. And I thought, oh, OK, so nickel and carbon will form an effective thermocouple junction. Not brilliant, but effective. Um, can we do that? So I grabbed some nickel paint, and this is uh, Super Shield by MG Chemicals. So I grabbed some nickel paint, which is quite good, and I took some of our paint, and I painted it in this little zigzag arrangement here. So you've got a line of nickel, a line of carbon, line of nickel, line of carbon, and they're a centimetre apart, so there's about 30 of them, so we've got 60 thermocouple junctions on the hot and cold side. So I plan on this being the hot side, this being the cold side, and we've got our zigzag structure. It's quite broad, so the resistance is quite high. We'd have to think about bringing it a bit nearer somehow. And then I had to think about how to generate the hot and cold side. Now, as you know, we're ter terrible cheapskates here, so we never turn on the heating. So the surrounding temperature is about 10 degrees centigrade at the moment. And what I've got here is a, a bit of cancel, and I've attached that to my power supply, and I'm going to put a few amps in that. Uh, I can't remember what the ampage is. I think it's about uh, 10 volts, 3 amps, something like that. And that'll raise the temperature. It doesn't raise the temperature by very much. There's sort of like three or four degrees difference, really. So I've put my um, proposed thermocouple onto the cancel wire on one side of it, because that's going to be the hot side. Then the other side, I've just left on this uh, woolen insulating blanket. This insulating blanket, incidentally, is here because I'm about to warm that up. Uh, and it's on the blanket, so it's about 10 degrees. So this side should get a little bit hotter. This should, side should stay cooler. Now, what I'm doing here is reading the voltage across this zigzag, across my th uh, thermoelectric generator, I'm reading the voltage. And actually, it's quite astonishing. So if I turn on the power, yeah, it's 10 volts, 2.6 amps, and almost immediately, you can see that voltage going up. So it was at 0.1 millivolts, and it's now at uh, 1 millivolt. So it's gone up tenfold in a few seconds. And the difference in temperature on that well, that's 11 degrees, and that's 12 degrees. So it's a one degree difference in temperature on the two sides, and we're getting tenfold. Oh, actually, it's 5.7. It's shooting up in terms of the millivolts. Uh, so I hope you can see it. It's right here. Uh, I'm going to try... Can I turn the backlight off? I'm not sure. No, I don't think I can. But it's at 9 millivolts now. We've got, kind of read that actually, 23 degrees on that side and 12 degrees on that side, according to this. Uh, and we're generating 12.4 millivolts on that. So actually we're getting a really good response out of it. If I turn that off, then that millivolt almost immediately begins to drop again. So, yep, there it goes, 13.3, 13.2, 13.1. So it's clearly a thermal effect. We heat one side, we get a massive increase in the voltage, as long as there's a temperature difference between the two, remember. And we're using our ink as a carbon source, but remember it's a graphene-based ink, and nickel paint as the other side of the thermocouple junction. And here is the thermocouple junction right there. Now that's all a bit rough and ready-made because I painted that up in about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, give it a, an hour to dry, just to see how it would actually work. Uh, and it's, it's quite impressive how it would actually work, I think. Not in terms of its output power, because its output power is quite low. Uh, well, for, to be honest, for that degree of difference, that's pretty impressive. But it's still low, you can do better. 
But what's interesting about it is the low cost. I mean, it costs very little to paint that. We're talking of uh, parts of a penny. So if parts of a penny, we can paint a thermoelectric generator. And my thought was we paint a load of them, stack them up, and if you stick that on the outside of the wall and that on the inside of the wall, a few degrees difference should be enough to generate actually a significant voltage. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you, that the uh, answer to Lisa's question, can our ink be used to generate electricity by thermal difference, is a resounding yes, as long as you match it with, the thermo, uh, match it with a, an opposite as a thermocouple, and here I'm using our ink as the carbon source and nickel as the nickel source, just following that research paper that I read. Anyway, I thought that was of interest. I thought I'd share it with you. I, I probably will look at that some more because that is really interesting, but if you want to look at it, then obviously you can buy the ink on the shop. But uh, another astounding use for our ink is a printable thermoelectric generator. Anyway, I hope that was of interest, and thank you very much for watching.